Season 1, Episode 9. But why? A few years ago, I watched a documentary called Crazy Not Insane on HBO Max. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend giving it a watch. This documentary gave me some food for thought that I've been gnawing on for quite some time now. It also fundamentally changed the way I view people's behavior. Prior to watching this documentary, I believed that people either did good things or bad things and never really took into account anything past their actions. My considerations were very black and white. Either you did or didn't do X, Y, and Z, and that is it. I find this to be the way many people think. This documentary, however, expanded my view on the subject. The psychiatrist in this documentary worked with multiple serial killers and found that all of them suffered insurmountable trauma as children, causing them to develop multiple personality disorder, which in turn created at least one personality that had the urge to kill. This information shook me to my core because I came to the realization that I had never asked one fundamental question. Why? Why do people do the craziest things? Why are some people mean to others for seemingly no reason? Why are some parents abusive? Why are we as society so cruel to each other? Now, I'm not here to discuss the extreme cases of bad behavior. I'll leave that to the professionals. But I do think asking why can be very valuable when evaluating everyday circumstances many of us find ourselves in. For example, let's say you own a bodega and you catch one of your customers stealing some bread and milk. All you know right now is that they're stealing from you and you're probably going to call the police on them. But if you are willing and able to ask why, you may be surprised to find that they're homeless, unable to find a job, and are starving. Or maybe they just lost their home in a fire and are spending all of their money trying to rebuild. Maybe they're a kid with a parent who's strung out on drugs, and they don't have any other way of getting something to eat. The why could be so many things. Does this mean they have the right to steal from you? No, but it may mean that you respond to them differently. Maybe you tell them to leave the food and you won't call the police. Maybe you tell them that you'll give them a discount if they pay for it. Maybe you offer to give them expired food items for free to help them out for a while. Whatever you do, knowing the why has provided you with at least some level of understanding and has hopefully invited compassion into the equation. Another example might be having an overbearing a-hole of a boss. Maybe one like Miranda from The Devil Wears Prada or Bill from Office Space. They're always on you about something. No matter how hard you work, it's not enough. Asking yourself, or them if you're able, why they behave that way can provide you with some insight. Maybe they have crappy home lives. Maybe they are super insecure. Or perhaps they are great at their work, but simply lack the skills and training to be an effective manager. How about that friend or relative you have that you can never really address issues with? When you try to express your grievances with them, they go on the defensive saying you're attacking them or that you're the one who has done X, Y, and Z. Or better yet, bringing up things you did in the past to use as a shield against addressing things they are doing in the present. Maybe they have unhealed trauma Maybe they tend to let their ego run the show. Maybe they were never taught what healthy discourse and disagreement looks like. 
The examples of people acting a fool for no reason are bountiful. And I'm sure you have many examples swirling around in your mind right now. To reiterate, asking why is not giving anyone an excuse to treat you poorly. Asking why helps you do two things. One, gain a better understanding of the reason for the person's behavior so you can determine if perhaps giving them a little grace is warranted. Two, and this one is important. It keeps you from taking their behavior personally. It is so easy to have someone treat you like crap and believe that their actions are caused by you. Everyone's actions and reactions are their own responsibility. Even if you messed up a TPS report, it doesn't give anyone the right to berate you. For anyone in a situation where you are being treated poorly, I am a major advocate for letting your walk-in do the talking. By this, I mean if the other person refuses to sit down and have a civil conversation with you or refuses to correct their behavior, then disengage with this person or people. Don't argue, don't fight, just collect your things and go. Their behavior is not your problem, it's theirs. And if they don't have any act right in their system, then peace them out. They can circle back around when they get themselves together. But even then, there's nothing that says you have to let them back into your life. But for those of you who are stuck with these people for now, understanding the why may help you alleviate some of the ick you feel inside. Again, their behavior is their responsibility. Your behavior is yours and there is no crossover. But trust and believe as a child raised in an abusive home, knowing why things were happening the way they were would have helped me not take the egregious acts done to me as personal fault and guilt. Sometimes there just isn't an out and you need to know what's going on so you can at least shield and insulate yourself a little because make no mistake. For a narcissist or an abuser, they will always say it's your fault. Until next time, may you always know yourself, love yourself, and be the fullest expression of you. May peace radiate from within you, bringing beauty to everything you touch. With ancestral love, Cassandra.